Fox 5 Health News. If you're trying to start a family, a new study finds birth control pills may play a role in how long it takes to get pregnant. Joining us now is Dr. Carrie Peterson from Lenox Hill Hospital. Good to see you. Okay, so this is a lot of people scratching their heads. How can the pill affect fertility? Well, what we know about the birth control pill is that it prevents you from getting pregnant. Yeah. That's the intention. That's why women take it. The way that it works is that it puts the brakes on the ovaries. It suspends the maturation of the follicles. So the follicles don't become eggs and they're not available to be mm -hmm. fertilized. What this study found is that if you're on the pill, you are unable to assess whether you are fertile mm. because uh, yeah. it impacts the parameters that we use to determine if a woman is fertile. And these are two things. This is something called an anti-mullerian hormone mm -hmm. and also something called a, fo a follicle count, which you look at the over and you see how many follicles they have. What we have learned is that the birth control pill suppresses both of these numbers. So would this be like a 36-year-old woman's on the pill, she goes to find out if she's still fertile and, and you don't get a good you test result? Tell. Okay. You cannot tell. So you mm. have to be off the pill to assess your how, for how long? You should say, well, around three months, but be careful. I have had some patients get pregnant like their first month off the pill. I know right. so many, many people. Not everyone that rebounds that. that so that's the thing. That you long. hear about that case a lot, but is there also a delay where it took like a few months maybe off the pill till, you know? It could. I yeah. mean, it, usually they say three months, but if you're having problems with fertility, you can detect it at that time. So I'm, gotcha, I'm wondering, gotcha. does the pill at all, has there been any evidence showing that the pill affects uh, a woman's fertility like it does not you understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying yes it does right. not okay. impact a woman's ability okay. to get pregant overall like it doesn't do any damage as you're that's on correct it. that's okay. correct okay okay good, good. all right let's talk about this as well knee replacement surgery has more than doubled in the past 20 years but a new study questions whether or not it's actually necessary for a lot of patients. So talk this to us about this. is a very extreme thing to do. Um, <laughs> right? It's a big surgery. Yeah, they yeah. looked at 4,800 people. 205 of them had a knee replacement. And when they used criteria from a model from Spain, it was a model from Spain, parameters used in Spain, it was found that 34% of these patients did have inappropriate knee wow. replacement surgeries. It's, it's a high number. They expected about 20%, but it was in fact 34%. Is that, is that a testament to how good the surgery has gotten that people aren't as afraid of it as they used to be in the maybe so you want just give me a new knee this has been problems for a long time and they I sort of jump so. into it I think that's what it is yeah and, and the criteria that they use they look at how bad is the patient's pain mm -hmm. what's their function can they bend the knee all the way how mm -hmm. how able are they to get around and how severe is the arthritis on MRI and perhaps the model that was used out of Spain isn't one that we use here in New York however um, it does say that we kind of need to assess what criteria we do use because there are risks of surgery. Any evidence yeah. that doctors are over uh, prescribing these the, surgeries? The knee replacement, yeah. I, I think this, is, this in itself is evidence that we are yeah. overdoing right. it. We may become too blasé about major surgery I, in I general, think so, and you know? And I think yeah. that um, orth orthopedic surgeons have become, they've become masters at this surgery, yeah. so patients feel more comfortable. But you really do need to take it on a case-by-case -case basis. I mean, if a patient, let's say the criteria is severe pain, but a patient only has moderate pain, if it's really impacting their quality of life, they may opt for the surgery because they're be miserable. more active later and you right. see a friend have a good result with a surgery, say, well, I'm going to do that too. Right, so it's a case-by-case -case basis. Gotcha. All right, Dr. Carrie Peterson, thank you so much. Thank you. We're good.